What's up guys, finally sleeps here. Today we're gonna replace the rotors on a Chevy Sonic. It's not that difficult. Uh, it's actually a really simple swap using just common tools. The only thing you're gonna need is a Torx bit to get the retaining screw out. That's it, other than uh, you know a socket set and jacks to be able to get the car up. It's pretty quick, uh, we'll go through it. Make sure you subscribe here. Turn on notifications so you never miss when a video goes live first. Um, we'll get right into it. All right, so here's the rotor. We're doing the driver front here on the Sonic. It's not that difficult, but as you can see, there's some major rust going on. The, the rotors are pretty rough, and we're just going to swap them out. She doesn't need brake pads because we just did that recently. Normally, though, I would say swap out your brake pads at the same time. Uh, and it's just a matter of once we pull the caliper and the pads off here, once this all comes off, you would just swap out new brake pads uh, uh, to be able to do it. There's really only, this is what's crazy, there's only one screw holding the drum on. It's just that screw. You just have to get the caliper and everything out of the way uh, to be able to get the old one off and put it on. Uh, so the first step is to take, there's two screws holding uh, the caliper. These are the piston screws. There's one here and one at the bottom. We're gonna take those two out first. Then there's two bolts in the back, if we can see them. Where are we at? Right here. here. There's one here and one down below uh, that basically hold the caliper to the back and then once we get this whole assembly off we'll just pull the rotor right out of the way now you do want to make sure you've got everything jacked up properly um, with jack stands to make sure you don't have any issues with you know, you know because your feet are going to be underneath the drum and everything as you're working we're going to take both top and bottom out and like I said these are pretty relatively easy to get out because I just replaced brake pads which is why and when realized that the rotors need to be swapped out as well okay that's it holding the piston and everything in. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set a jack stand back here to be able to sit the piston on. Now the next step is to remove the two bolts in the back that are holding uh, the caliper assembly in. So I need to use a breaker bar to get those nuts out or the bolts off. So I went ahead and zip tied it up to the coil just so it's out of the way. Now we should be loose. Okay, both bolts are out. So we're gonna take the whole assembly off with the pads and everything and set it aside. So now we just need to pull the rotor. All right, so calipers are off. Next step is to remove the rotor. Um, we're gonna use 
some PB Blaster, which is just a penetrating catalyst to make sure we can kind of break down any of the rust behind and all the bolts, the lugs, and everything. Uh, normally when you do this, you're gonna wanna tap it a few times with a hammer to kind of get it in on the threads. But for this, we're gonna use a hammer anyway, just a little sledge to kind of break the rust up uh, to get it. And we're gonna hit it just a few times in between all of the lugs just to loosen it up a little bit. All right, so if you look, there is a little set screw right there. That is the only thing, once you get the assembly off, that is holding it on. Generally, it's just a little Torx bit. It looks like that. It's just a star bit. Um, but there's so much rust, you can see how you know how corroded it is here. The the rotor is fused to the hub, uh, so it's it's just stuck with all the rust that's holding it there. So the first thing you want to do is use some um, penetrating uh, catalyst or using PB blaster. Um, this is my favorite, uh, and you just spray inside here in between everything and let it sit for a while and try to get the penetrating catalyst in to break down the the rust that's containing it. And once you get that on there, uh, just give it a few taps. You're not gonna wanna hit it here because it can damage the rotor. You're gonna wanna hit it here with a hammer between the lugs. You can put something on the lugs to protect them. Um, and this is a pretty big hammer for what we're doing. Uh, you can use a little bit smaller one to make sure that you're hitting in between. And you're basically just going to knock this as hard as you can until you work the rust loose and then it's going to start to go. You don't want to hit it from behind and you don't want to hit it on the front if you're trying to save the rotor. already kind of it's already broke loose there's the hub we're gonna use a it's gonna get any excess rust off and then we're just gonna make sure we can clean it all that way we don't seize up on the next rotor We're good to go. Next step is to put the new rotors on. All right, here's the new rotors. Just need to make sure we line it up so that the set screw is where it needs to be. Put the new set screw in. Solid. The next step is the brake assembly that we pulled off. We're gonna put right back on with the brake pads in place and slip it through. And then we hold it in from behind with those bolts. Next step, we're gonna cut down the caliper that we have hanging up, the piston. And place it back on. But right now I have to compress the piston. 
So we'll use a piston compression, piston compression tool, or you can use um, a set of channel locks. For this, we're gonna use the caliper compression tool just to push it back. And that's it, just far enough that it'll now slip over. into position. The two bolts to put back in the slides. There it is. Double check everything. Make sure it's exactly how you want it. And you should be good to go. New rotors on and finished. Last step after replacing the rotors is gonna be to pump the brake to get the caliper back out. Make sure it's not spongy and make sure you're in good shape. It's actually not that big a deal. It was a quick and easy job. I uh, hope that helped. If it did, make sure you subscribe here at the channel for when any of the car stuff goes live. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me. As long as you guys keep watching, I'll keep making videos.